Destruction. Okay. Destruction. What have you destroyed? They cannot use the entity to do business. So. Okay. I see they are jobless. Hunger. Okay. It destroys children. Okay. Every day, every night they cry. Who are that person? I do. Thank you, Jesus. And that was how she received her deliverance to the glory of God. Put your hands. But she'll be speaking in one of our native dialects. Pigeon. So, madam, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Please introduce yourself to us. Tell us the people standing beside you and share with us your wonderful testimony. Madam, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Introduce the people who stand beside you. Introduce yourself to us and tell us what God Almighty don't do for your life. Emmanuel! Emmanuel! My name is Mrs. Ngozi Kahlo. The people who stand near me for here is my lovely daughters. Bless and Kahlo and the Naomi Kahlo. My brothers and sisters, this are so far. You know what to be saying, person, so far, this I do, so far, me. I so far, so far. This thing starts when I small. The family, when I from come, then they serve juju. Then they serve juju. And they get watch line where my papa, they always, they carry us every time go. When we try the college there, now they may be woman where they there. And they they go kill something, we go cook, we go chop me with my brothers. And they that juju, woman know they there. So she said her name is Blessing Kal Ngozi Kalu. The best people standing beside her are her children, Blessing Kalu and Naomi Kalu. She said that she has suffered a lot. Thus, this spirit affected her so much. The problem started when she was young. She comes from an idol-worshipping family. And there is this shrine where her father goes to worship. But because she is a female, her father takes her along with other people to go and worship the idol. So, when we call it uh, there, when they come to finish, they go do uh, sacrifice, put for his side pot. And they did pot go they smoke. Then go come carry, go cut palm fruit. Come use and make rag and put them for my head. One other day, man, go carry that sacrifice. I put them with the pot. I put them for my head. So one other day, go, 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 go correct, correct them again for my hand. I keep for grand. When we reach home, my papa go serve his own too. So before you know, my friend, children, when me with them, they pray my age mate, they begin to avoid me. They begin to avoid me. So, even if my parents begin to avoid me, my mama go say, may my brothers know near me, I know where. Ha, how come they think, what did they do me? I don't know. So, she's explaining to us that when they take her to that shrine, her and her siblings, they would put a pot with some things in it. The pot would be burning, bringing out smoke. They would put that pot on our head. They would also kill some chickens and do some incantations round our head. They would kill it. They would eat it. When they go back home, her father would also go to the corner and serve the idol. So, this thing, one day my papa can't wake up. He said he won't go where he go carry me, he go tomorrow. So he called it 3 o'clock in the midnight and he wake me. He said, make a bath and wear clothes for him. We enter motor. When we reach there, waiting at first see for the compound, I see crazy people, full one side. And then my, my mind, they just caught fear. I begin to run. I begin to run. My papa shout, 
And they tell them, they catch me. If we were there, and they pursue me and catch me. Carry me enter the room. The part, the man, paro. And they wait, wait till I see for there. I see one small chair for there. And the white basin for top of the small chair. And the one coins from inside. So the man come. He carried my hand. He carried something. He shook me for this side. He shook me for this side. The, the, my hand, he the bleed. And then the man put my hand for mouth. Begin to suck the blood. And he suck this one finish. I begin to suck this one too. And he tell me, say, if I reach out, he tell my papa, say, if I reach out, I go confess people, may we with anger that day for the Obanje. So she's saying, that after that activity in the shrine, when she got back to her house, her friends, her age grade, they started looking at her in a weird way. They started telling her she's behaving weird. Even her family started seeing her as a weird person. One day, her father told her, tomorrow we will be going somewhere. 3 a.m. in the morning, her father woke her up the next day and asked her to prepare. They were going somewhere. When they got to the place, she said immediately she stepped into the compound. Or what she saw were mad people tied to the corner. People with mental disorder tied to a corner. Immediately she saw them, she took to her heels immediately. And her father shouted and people chased after her, caught her, took her back into that building. Immediately she stepped into the building. She saw a stool in the middle of the room. And on that stool was a white basin a white plate with water inside and a coin. And she saw a strange looking man. He came out of nowhere. He took her by the hands. He pierced both palms with something sharp. The palms started to bleed. And the man took her palms and sucked the blood from both palms. So when he sucked the blood to finish, he put my two hands for that white basin. So when we call her... My papa come. When he tell my papa, say, if he come, if we will come, I go confess people with me with the day for the Obanje. My papa come. As we reach house, my papa give me food. I eat, he finish. He begin carry cane. They frog me. They frog me. He said, make I begin to confess people with me with the gather there for the group. Now, I say, I don't know anybody. He fought, he, he said, of when I go die, I begin the Call name of people when I know no. So she said, after that blood exercise, the man dipped her hands into that bowl of water with the coin, asked her father to take her home, that when she gets home, she would confess something to the father. And when they got home, the father gave her food, she ate. After eating the food, the father brought out a very long cane and started flogging her. But because of fear of being beaten to death, she started calling names of people that she does not even know. So, it didn't begin to, that's how it began to happen until I grew up. When I grew up one day, my papa told one man, say, make her marry. So, I can't say I don't get any choice again. You see, when you be saying I be the ocean when I go take come up for the compound, and they follow the man. The man go pay money for my head. I follow and reach house. The day when we go meet ourselves, husband and wife, and the demand begin the quarrel, begin the quarrel, begin the quarrel. For me, no reason. I ask, what did happen? The man say it is a another person don't he don't clear the road. Make, make, make a call enter, and they are called put down for sofa. So she's saying, she's saying that after that exercise, when one day her father just brought a man home and told her, you are going to get married to this man. And she agreed willingly because she felt that getting married to that man is an escape route. She would live everything going on in her life behind and move forward. But to her greatest surprise, when she got home, when they wanted to meet as man and wife, another problem started because the man was angry 
that he met her a virgin. He was expecting to meet her on pure, but he met her pure. So, since in that day, trouble start. Fight every day. Pour every day, no peace. The one day, they come to me say, people wait, no me come for me for house. Say, the man, the man. For road. So, I can shout, people never wait. It will wear me with them, therefore, wear me with them, therefore, the same compound. And they then run, follow me. As we read there, yeah, the man don't put it cross. Now people begin to, hold on, tie on. They send me with the go village. As we reach, if, as we don't reach a village, where did they do this man? He just come out. He don't wear. So, she said that after that day, trouble started in the home. No more peace, constant fighting, constant quarreling. So one day she was in the house and she received a call that her husband was running mad on the streets. She ran outside with the neighbors. On getting there, truly she saw him. He was already half naked roaming the streets. So she beckoned on people to help her catch him. They caught him put him in a vehicle, straight to the village. But to her greatest surprise, immediately they, they got to the village, he became okay. So, now the driver drive rich compound, the, their compound, and the, as he then went, explain, wait, as he then went, explain, what happened to him. Now your papa say, may they not talk anything, because in Peking, nothing they do him. He said in Peking, okay. Now the man at her house. As he entered her house, Mara carry, Mara carry our cloth enter inside the room where me with and they normally they sit down. Now they tell me they make a they come correct because this one now I carry for hand at that time. They come come out and for my hand. I carry the rest two children. Tell me they make a they go my papa house. They know they marry again. So she said immediately she got to the compound of her husband, the husband's father welcomed them and told them to release his son, that nothing was wrong with his son. As they were preparing to go inside the house, the family members came, they took the children from her and told her to go, that they were not getting married anymore, that the marriage would be annulled and dissolved. So, I drag her, I go test see my children. No way. I can't travel, go one state. As I reach there, I begin the hustle. Begin the hustle. Waiting at it, say, in Africa salad. I begin the hustle. They begin the hustle. I can't travel. Make I go see my children. So, and when I go, the man go arrest me. When I go, the man go arrest me. So, I go go again. The man, they arrest me. For four times. In order to see my children. Now I come, hustle, gather money. I can't go meet him, Papa. I say, I beg, may you no know verse. Find me small space to make a build the house so that you make a make sure I see, I see my, I they see my children. So, now, the man say, okay, we go settle. So, for first, for settle, the man say, no, he no want again. Instead of that, make a carry my children. He can't give me the two children. And they, they, they not let me carry this one. They see this. So she said that after that, when they chased her out of the house, she left just to gather a little bit so that she can go back and visit her children. But whenever she goes to visit her children, she, the, ma the husband in person will use the cops to arrest her and lock her up. It happened on four different occasions. She even went as far as going to the village to talk to the husband's father to give her a little space in his compound to build something so that she can just be watching over her children. But they refused, and finally, they gave her the children, except one of her child, and she left like that. So, as I carry the children, I go, I begin to hustle my life, they go. One day, I commit my husband, when I deal with his soul. So, he can't tell me, say, he won't marry me. Now I say, no, I don't burn. So he can't tell me, say no. 
He said, as he take like me, as he they see me so, now so he take like my, that was my children. So, now he come marry me. The man loved me. He know what he be say, I never see that kind of love. This is where they, this is where they bomb me. So, after she carried her children and she left the village, she continued to live her life until she met another man who she is currently married to. She experienced so much love from that man. Love that she has not seen in her life. And they, this evil spirit, this I do not let me enjoy this my marriage. One day, so I began to worry the man. At times I go pack from noticing. See how they go. The evil spirit to go, even when it comes, he go tell me, say, pack, 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 pack. Why go stay here? Before you know, I begin to misbehave. They follow this man. They fight. Who is this man? He know if he won't fight. If you don't remove him, he had it for my cloth. He go waka komot. He no go touch me. So she said that this evil spirit deprived her of the enjoyment of a new home. She did not experience happiness even in her new home. That whenever the, the spirit comes upon her, she hears a voice telling her, pack out, pack out, pack out. Why are you here? Sometimes the spirit will make her fight, fight the man for no reason. And the man being a very gentle and cool-headed person, once she starts, he just picks his stuff and steps out of the house. So, one day, the evil spirit just comes. I don't hear a voice. He gets small thing where he have not be something just nothing they just he not even get that is when he has me and he know he not even get this. I go begin the hungry, they begin the vest. He go come be like say they grab pepper poop from my heart. If you don't do that thing, my mind did not go rest. The spirit, I hear the voice, he say, You go live and make you go like that today. You go live and make you go like that today. I can't go just go call police for this man. As I call for policemen, I lie put for here. They said this man every day night they beat me. Every day night they beat me. Say my police come carry him. And they ask we reach police station. Now when he, he explain himself, they can't find out to say that my husband. Now I police people, and they not do me anything. I just they fight him for no reason. Now I want mature police woman just look me. He said, what will be your problem? Now you can't carry on broom, give me. Say, make a sweep all police station around. So, she's saying that whenever this thing happens, she just gets angry for no reason. She is upset unnecessarily. Something happened one day, something very little. She quarreled with the man. And her husband left the house. And she had a voice telling her, will you allow this man go scot-free? Immediately, she, she dressed up and she went to the police station. And she reported the man. She lied against her husband, telling the officers there that the man always beat her for no reason. And the police went to the man's place and they picked him up, only for them to get to the station. And they found out that the man is her husband and the man did nothing wrong. Because of that, Thing, the officers there decided to punish her. They gave her a very long broom and asked her to sweep the whole station. So, as they give me broom, I begin to sweep. My husband carry broom for me. Madam, we know say you day emotional. It's all, all this is not to glorify God Almighty for what he don't do for our life. So she said that because of the love that her husband has for her. He could not see her in that situation. He also picked the broom and joined her in sweeping the station. So, as we sweep the police station finish, he can't tell me, say, where they go? So, he can't tell me, say, where they go? He can't carry me the stuff. He... So, when I do that in finish, you could just be like, say, not be me doing. If you look who they do this thing, I go quiet like you cold water. My husband say, if he see, you, everybody where he see you, 
He continues to say, he not, not people confuse do this thing when they do so. And they begin to beg him. I begin the town. They beg him. Beg him, make him forgive me. And they, one faithful day, he get where I go. I come meet one woman. So, my spirit, they tell me, say, tell, you, tell the woman your problem. Tell the woman your problem. Tell him. One mature woman like this. That's the mama beg. I want to tell you what they bother me for. He said, my, my, my daughter come. So, I can't narrate all the story for him. Now, the woman tell me, say, this is your problem, get solution. But, if get where I go carry you go, but, I want to make you pray. I go give you the name of the place. If you play, you like him. If you play, you like him. Hey, I go carry you go. If you don't like him, he go leave you. So she's saying, whenever she does these things finish, when she gets back home, she will feel so sad. She will be remorseful. So that faithful day after her husband and her finished sweeping the station, she went back home and she apologized to him because she was feeling sorry for everything that she has done. So one faithful day, she went somewhere and she saw a lady and something told her in her heart, explain what you are going through to this lady. And she did. And the woman told her, I have a solution for you. So, now you can't make sure the name of the church. It's in a synagogue. Go and pray. I know, I know you can pray. Now I say yes. So when I call rich, I call tell my husband, say, see, wait, see, I wait, I see, I'll meet woman. I see, I explain everything to her. Now he say, good. He say, no worry, I go join you for the prayer. So, so I say, no worry, I go join you for prayer. For the place when I just they tell her that thing. Before you know, sleep will carry me. I say, sleep will carry me. What did I just see? I see one big church, one beautiful church when I never see. With a different, different flag. And the palm tree. They, but where police people they day for gates? I just see them. So now I call the woman. I tell the woman, say, I say the, I say the church, oh, this church I never see them before. Now the woman tell me, say, we can explain what I see. I say, he said, at the church. So, madam, you mean, say, you they try to tell us, say, that, that place where you see for dream, tell us, now that place you dinner? Yes, now they. People have got to put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> so, she's telling us that after she explained everything that she was going through to that woman, the woman told her, I have a solution for you. Pray about this place called Synagogue Church of All Nations. And she went back home, explained to her husband. Her husband even agreed to join her in prayer. And she just sat down, closed her eyes for a bit, and she saw a very beautiful building with the flags, the palm tree, even down to every detail of the synagogue church of all nations. And she's here today to confirm that that place she saw in her dream is exactly where she is today. So, one day, I come there for a dream. They tell me, say, Pastor, they call me. So, I come to follow the person. As we reach, it can't be prophetic if you get to an answer. Sit down. And they tell me, say, make her sit down. I sit down. If one day ask me, where did they bring for me with my husband? I can't begin to narrate all this matter they give him. As I talk, everything finish. He tell me, say, you not get anything where you see for inside. If you get what you see for inside, if you know how you go to, for take, do them. He said, from today, they go. Men are not carry anything where they happen for inside my house. They go outside again. So, since that day, as I wake up, I can't see my husband as my husband. Like that, like that day, now we, that time now we marry. 
If the rough, eh, it just excess. <laughs> so she's telling us that after, after that dream of seeing the synagogue church of all nations, she went back to that woman and explained to the woman, this was what I saw. And the woman said, that is the place I am talking about. Later on, she had another dream where she was sitting down somewhere and somebody came to meet her and told her, I said, the pastor is calling you. And she was surprised. Said, ah, which pastor? Only for her to get there and she found out that it was Prophet T.B. Joshua. He sat her down and asked her, what is causing problems in your homes? And she narrated everything from the beginning to the end. And he told her, there is nothing there. There is no problem. There is no cause for alarm. The only thing you would do is whatever happens in your home should remain in your home. And when she woke up, she started to see her husband in a very different light. The love increased. She started seeing him more handsome, more loving, more caring. People of God, put your hands together for Jesus now. So, this said, I do say, eh. Hey. So, you don't get busy for home now. And they start. Anything when I lay my hands as a business, you don't get the one way they work again. This I do tormenting me. I put hand for this place, you not go work. Even if I start to sell food, if I cook rice from morning like this, before 9 to 9.30, inside the rice, go the black. I suffer. Anything when I put the business clothes, you know, get waiting and they lay my hand again. So she said, after that, after that victory in the dream, he said, when she woke up, her home changed. But then again, that idol said to her, do you think you will be happy? And before you know what's happening, anything she lays her hands on, it doesn't work. To the extent that she started selling food. When she cooks the food in the morning, the food will be nice. But when it's time to sell and she opens her cooler, the food is already black and spots. Not be only black, oh. The food will go to smell like send her three days. Food where they cook to away for those be. So, even if you wait in my husband, they do. Everything stop. And then one day, I begin to cry. I begin to cry. And begin to cry, they say, God, where be this one way they happen to me? I cry, 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 cry one night. I sleep. I don't feel if you pray again. I sleep. So, I can't see man of God for my dream. So, as I see man of God for my dream, that dream, are they inside forest? Are they waiting at the past? The grass, the grass where he did here. The chuku chuku where he did here, where he get up. He tie me for leg. He tie me for here. Even if he some don't tear my leg, my leg, they bleed. So, at the struggle I go take, come out for inside. Waiting I hear, congratulations. It can't be prophet if you sure. So she said, not only will the food be black, but the food will be smelling like rotting food. Three days rotting food. She said one night she became so fed up, she cried herself to sleep. And in that dream, she, she saw she was in the forest, in the bush, and she was, she was in prison. She was caged with spikes, spiked rope. It tied her feet and tied her head as well. And all of a sudden, she just heard a voice saying, congratulations. And when she looked up, she saw that it was Prophet T.B. Joshua. So, as he said, you know, you know why I congratulate you? Now, nah, I shake your head. He said, many people go through these challenges and go back. And you, 
he no give up. He continue to find me. He continue to find me until he reach here. Congratulations again. I wake up for dream. So she said, after Prophet Joshua told her congratulations, and he asked her a question, do you know why I am congratulating you? She said, no. And he told her, what you are going through now, a lot of people go through it and they, and they turn back, they lose faith. They, they give up. But you did not give up. You kept on pushing. Congratulations. So, I went and give me faith to enter this arena. And then, and then when I call, when I call here, an announcement of living water. Now I come, prepare, carry my, me, my children. I said, this one cannot miss me. Now I make me come here. So she said that when she woke up from that dream, that was what gave her the faith, the encouragement to come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And luckily for her, she heard about the living water service that will be coming up. And that was how she picked her children, entered the next vehicle, straight to Lagos. So madam, tell us, what did come happen when you reach the synagogue? When our mama my friend, Joshua, come out, a woman of faith, come out, he begin to preach. My body change. My body begin to vibrate. He come here, he said, they carry coal. See, power for my body. And I know if he control myself. For we are there again. Even if he, before I even reach this altar, I know even know what they do again. And the God Almighty set me free and deliver me. Deliver not only me, my heart's wood. People of God, put your hands together for Jesus. That clap is not enough. Rise on your feet and appreciate God Almighty for his goodness. Shout Emmanuel! We may be seated in God's presence. So she said, when she came, when the woman of God passed in Joshua started preaching, she began to shake uncontrollably. She did not understand what was going on anymore. And after that living water exercise, that was how she received her deliverance to the glory of God. So, madam, for the benefit of people where they listen, tell us, since that day, what will be the changes where you notice in yourself? I sleep three good days. I not even remember, say, I feel, maybe, before, before, I could just see, when I wake up, it could just be like, say, they beat me. Or then they pursue me. Or I go see snake. But this is it there. I know they see all those things again. Or I go see myself forever. See, see that day, I know see all those things again, no? Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. So she said, after that deliverance, she's now fine. She sleeps like a baby. She no longer has nightmares. She is okay and fine to the glory of God. So, madam, tell us, what will be the thing where you want to encourage people where they are side? People where be say that they go through waiting you don't go through in the past. Or people where they go through things where it re won't resemble waiting you've been go through in the past. What do you want to encourage them? My dear, waiting I want my brothers and sisters. Waiting I want to encourage people, both those where they watch me now. Don't matter any situation when you day. Just trust in God. Still push. They go, no give up. God, where you do, we see me through, so he must see you through Jesus' name. So she said that whatever situation you are going through, don't give up, don't stop. Dig deep and fight it through. God Almighty, that's how we also see each and every one of us through. So, madam, let's listen to your daughter. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Please introduce yourself to us, the people beside you, and briefly... Tell us about God's goodness in the life of your mom. Children of God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel Church. My name is Blessing Kalu. And the people standing next to me is my lovely mother, Mrs. Ngozi Kalu. And then my kid sister, Naomi Kalu. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness and kindness upon my family. 
God has been faithful. It has not been easy. It was terrible. But I give God Almighty all the glory. I thank God for seeing my mother through, for seeing my household through. Because my mom is the kind of person that just to walk, walking is a problem. She barely walks, always sick, cry. 100% of happiness, my mom only is 30%. The rest, other 70, is sadness. But I give God Almighty all the glory for her freedom and happiness now. <clears throat> Children of God, God Almighty did not only end there. He also located me. Because what God did for me is beyond measure. Most of the things we go through today are things you know nothing about. Things that the people that even did it a long time gone. But it is the innocent ones that suffer it now. Because what I went through during my own experience, I knew nothing about it. I told God, I happened to be that among the children that was opportune to meet my mom during the time of challenges she was going through, I happened to be left behind. So I started living in the village with my grandmother. And I discovered that the community is a place whereby they worship idol. My grandfather from the home used to be a very scary person due to the idol he worships and what he uses the idol powers to do. So, and my community is a kind of community, community that when you stand, snakes can be walking around everywhere and you dare not kill anyone. You can sit in your compound, your trees, your corridor, green snakes everywhere. You dare not touch it. It's a kind of place that a woman can give birth and snakes will come and greet the baby and go. So that's the kind of community I came from. So I started living with my grandma. I noticed all those things. From there, I traveled to the city. I was carried to the city to stay with my aunts. So from there, I heard that my late dad had gone. So while all these changes was going, going back to the village, coming back to the city, it started affecting my academic, my schooling. If I should go back to the village, I will go back to class before the class I, I, I was before. So that was how it happens until I finished my primary school. Entering into my secondary school was a problem, was a challenge. I kept on pushing from there because I'm the kind of person that I, I like doing my things alone. I lived almost all my life doing it alone. So be, as time go, passes by, I started hawking from one thing to another just to make sure I can buy my clothes, cream, anything I want to do. That's how I lived my life. There is nothing I didn't hawk in this life. Spoon, walnut, pure water, air, all kind of, just mention it, was what I went through until I finished my secondary school. So after that, I was told that I cannot further my education, no, because even me, myself, I know to myself that before I could finish, it was not funny. So I had to stay back. After that, I now decided that this is not how I will be, I will end up. I said, okay, I want to go into skills. Let me go and learn skills. At least from there, I can fetch in money. As time passes by, I went into skills. But immediately I finished the, my skill learning, my health stylist learning. No money to open up my own shop. I couldn't even do my freedom. So I met the lady I learned from. I told her that, as you can see, you know the way the thing is. It's not something that I'll come and be narrating because she knows everything about me. So she now said, okay, I can go ahead. I told her I want to go into working. I want to go and work at least to earn money. She now said, when I'm ready, anytime I'm ready, I should come for my freedom, which was what I did. After that, I started working. After the working time, I decided to look for my parents to see if life will be at least easy for me. So that was how I, I went in looking for my parents. While I was looking for my, my biological mother, I was working. So as I then, I didn't even know what my mother looked like. Because according to them, I was left at a very tender age. 
So if I could, if I should walk past, I won't even know it was my mom that just walked past me. That was how terrible it was. So I started looking for until through social media platform, I met an old friend. So the friend now told me that I have your brother's um, phone number. If I do communicate with them, I said no. That was how he gave me my brother's phone number. And then I contacted him. From there, I was able to meet with my mother to even see how she looks like. So after that, I was happy. But getting there, the situation I even found them, <laughs> it's not even something to tell of. I couldn't even cope. I said, ah. I was even happy coming to see if the life would even be easy for me. But meeting them, it was critical condition. Because the current um, father, the current husband my mother got married to, had nothing doing. I didn't even know that this was what they have been battling right from the very beginning. So he had nothing doing. I met my mom, always sick. Even the African salad she was selling then, in a week, she can go to market one week. Coming back, that money she used for selling, for, uh, for the market, she will use it for medication. Either medicine, nothing, nothing, always sick, complaining of heaviness and all. So I said, okay, since I've met it like that, let's accept our fate and continue going. So with the little amount of money that I was earning, that was what we now, the, the money I said I would save for my opening of shop, we now started using it to take care of house things. So it kept on until I now met a guy that said that he would want to take life serious. He wants to settle down. And I said, okay, we prayed over it. We, we continue. We started dating. As time passes by, my mother now said, ah, I don't know. This thing I'm, uh, I'm seeing about you, I don't know because she's a very prayer, prayerful type. I don't know why. Why I do see you in a dream. Is it that an old man is walking with you or... You, the, the, you, you, when you are sleeping, an old man is always lying beside you. All kind of thing. So as I, the first time she told me, I got very furious. I was angry. I told her, why would you be saying such a thing? What do you mean by that? I didn't even want to accept that it was what they call spiritual husband. I didn't even want to hear it. So I got very angry. And she kept quiet. Before you know it, the, the guy that wants to get married to me, my fiancé, she, he started complaining. That he doesn't know that, that uh, in his dream, suddenly, he will see a guy putting on black on black. That whenever he wants to give me something, this guy will take it from him. That when he stretches his hand to give me anything, the guy will take it from him and tell him, she's not yours, she's mine. Leave her alone. And then he will, walk up, he will wake up. And then by the time he told me, I will be like, ah, what's going on? Because me, I'm not this prayerful type. Until I now told my mom, my mom said this was, I, because she know that if she should go straight again, I will get angry. At, until one fateful day, I had a dream. And I saw this old man, because then when I was small, I would see girls, children, running around a plant, under a plantain tree. And then this old man would be having an affair with little, little girls, little children. I will ignore it. Until this very fateful day, I now had a dream. I saw an, like an occultic man, a man that people fear all around the world. So he had many wives already, and he was about getting married to another man. And at the same time, pressuring me to get married to him. I said, no, I, would, I won't. So he kept on following me everywhere. I became scared because he's the kind of person that is, is, uh, is harmful. I ran into a room, and the room happens to be a very dark room. So while this man was approaching me, I was scared, shaking shivering. So as he was about to open the curtain, I woke up. That was when fear gripped me. And I called my mom. I said, this is what I saw. My mom now told me that this was what she was trying to tell me at the very beginning that I ignored. So that was how. And I said, okay, what do we do? She said, all we just have to do is to keep praying. My dear brothers and sisters, the moment I joined my mother, because she has been fighting this thing from the very beginning, the moment I joined her, every night, they will be pressing me by my neck. Every night. They, no night will come and go without me being pressed. Sometimes I get that pressing six times before daybreak. 
Sometimes, seven times. Is it that something is tying me around my body, strangling me to death, or something else? So the other thing I got scared, three good days, if I want to close my eye, they will strangle me. If I want to close my eye until at the end, and now we kept, we kept on praying till, to, to God be the glory. And I had a dream this faithful day. And I saw a young lady. And the young lady was fair in the dream. So, and I heard a message that this girl was, this lady was given dates of death. That by the 27th of July, she would die. So in that dream, I was not like, ah. And in the dream, it now happens that this girl had already run to church before the date that they gave her. So in that dream, I was saying, ah, thank God, though. Thank God, at least she came before then. So I now saw a pastor laid his hand on the lady's stomach and was praying for her that they declared death, that they, 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 they blocked her womb, that she would not give birth, that they declared death for her. So I was not happy that at least they prayed for her, it would stop. That was when I now realized that I ha- the, the hand that was laid on that lady happens to be on my stomach. That was when I realized that I was the girl that they gave 27th of July, 2024, to die. So tell us, after you had that terrible nightmare, what happened? I had that terrible nightmare and I said that I will come. I will, I will run down here. Already, I already learned that youth convention is, uh, was, uh, is on the 26th of July. So youth convention being 26th of July and I was given 27th of July to, to go. Okay, since it's like that, let me rush here because I know immediately I get here. <laughs> Who bomb monkey banana? Who dash that person? So I now came. I said, okay, I will attend the youth um, convention. That was how we came. My dear brothers and sisters, during the youth uh, uh, convention, later that evening, I had an attack inside this church. My stomach everywhere was hot. I almost collapsed. It was by the grace of God that very day. So I cried after the, the program, I cried back home. I was crying along the road till I got home. I prayed because I knew if I should tell my mom the very date that they gave me, this woman might have collapsed before me, self. So when I, uh, that very f- Friday night, I slept. I prayed before I slept. So that was when I now saw the woman of God, mommy Evelyn Joshua, with water ministering it on people, Praying for them. So when she was praying for them, she got to my turn. She ministered it on me and laid her hand at the back of my waist in the dream. So that was how I now discovered that something like an iron was already, was like that. It held me bound not to breathe, not to do anything. It was just scattering me. Immediately she laid her hand and prayed on me. I heard a very loud noise. Of something losing. That was how I got myself that very day. People of God, put your hands together for Jesus. Say, our God is good. Our God is a God of miracles. And to the glory of God, I got myself that day. So imagine me not coming here as if I was at home. The enemy would have taken themselves 26, not me. So to the glory of God, that very Sunday, I attended service. So when this, uh, the laying of hands was going on, the evangelist came through our line. He just started at the very first person at our line. The next thing, me at the seventh row at the back. I was already feeling cold, shaking everywhere. Because the cold was extraordinary. It was not even looking like cold of an AC. I was shaking. The more I kept looking at the evangelist, the more something in me, like, starts coming out. And the next thing, I I, I couldn't even control myself. I did the shake of everything. Like, 
I didn't even know what rose inside of me. I was vibrating. As we can see on our screen, that is when she was being prayed for by the evangelist. That touch from the right hand of God. And she has come back to give God all the glory. So, madam, after your deliverance, tell us, what are the changes you noticed in yourself? <laughs> to God be the glory. God is really faithful. After my deliverance, children of God, those people that used to strangle me by the neck, I no longer see them again. I now had a dream. I saw this same group of people, black on black. They always put on black on black uh, clothing with black hats. So, to God, be the, to God be the glory, I was walking towards this direction and they were coming towards this direction with calabash. I walked past freely. They walked past their way. They did not talk to me. They did not touch me. On the norms, if I should see this, my four. Hey, hey, trouble. We will fight and fight and fight. By the time I start defeating them, they will turn to a dwarf. From dwarf with palm fruit, they will turn to an animal. All the time, before the deliverance, I do always river, snakes, dwarfs animals, all kind of thing. But after the deliverance, children of God, I saw those snakes being killed. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. So, with this wonderful thing that God Almighty has done for you, what is your word of encouragement to our listeners out there? Children of God, Emmanuel, my advice to the listeners here and the viewers all over the world we know that a lot of things we go through, we know nothing about it. But all I keep telling you is to keep pushing. I know it's not easy because it was not easy for me as well. But continue pushing, continue pressing on. Because what really gave me the faith was that the word of God said that those that kept on that persevered to the end, they will definitely get the reward of crown of glory. But if you give up, if you give up, the enemy will see that as an opportunity to even finish you to the end. So never give up. Continue persevering. God that saw me through, we also see you through. Amen. Escuchamos el maravilloso testimonio de esta familia, esta mujer vino a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones con un problema de ataques espirituales. El espíritu se manifestó al llegar ella aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones al subir al altar en el servicio del agua viva. Ella eh, se manifestó y el espíritu fue expulsado, un espíritu de ídolo familiar. Ella nos comenta de que esto ha estado afectando a su familia por muchos años. Ella ha estado bajo diferentes rituales y que había afectado su matrimonio y sus relaciones, pero al llegar aquí, Dios Todopoderoso la liberó, como vemos en pantalla, y también a su hija, que estaba sufriendo también de ataques espirituales, la familia fue declarada libre para la gloria de Dios. Nos venimos de escuchar el testimonio de Madame Ngozi, née de una familia idolatra. Su infancia ha sido marcada de rejet, tanto por las familias de, de su familia y su padre. Así, ella se marió a un hombre que su padre le ha impuesto. Así, ella finit por divorcer après avoir donné trois enfants à cet homme, remarié avec un homme qui l'aimait tant, l'idole l'a poussé à maltraiter cet homme, ainsi empêchant la paix de s'installer dans la famille. Reçu les conseils d'une vieille femme de Vinci à la Squan, elle est venue à la Squan où elle a reçu sa délivrance, comme nous venons de le voir. Et elle nous dit également qu'elle a eu des séries de rêves meublés de la présence du prophète Tibi de choix qui l'encourageait. Et venue ici, elle a été complètement délivrée. Et comme conseil, Elle nous dit de ne pas être découragé, de continuer à pousser jusqu'à ce qu'on ait la victoire. Sa fille également, Blessing, a pris la parole et elle nous a dit ce qu'elle a expérimenté suite au mauvais rêve qu'elle a eu. Et elle dit maintenant la gloire de Dieu, elle est complètement libérée et nous dit que maintenant, elle fait de cauchemar, que tu fais de sa vie. Et elle nous dit de ne pas se décourager car quand on pousse, la vie nous appartiendra. Est-ce qu'on est pour la suite des témoignages? People of God, praise the Lord. 